History Channel. My name is Catherine Margaret Kruger and I will be telling you the story behind the his story. Or shall we rather say today their story? For I will be telling you the story of the first three interpreters here in Cape Town. That was O Harry the Strandloper, Kertua or Eva and Duman or Numao. So get yourself a cup of coffee or rather a glass of wine probably again because old Jan van Riebeek is once again in the story. So sit back, enjoy yourself and let's start historing around. There were three extraordinary people who lived here in South Africa. When Jan van der Riebeek had set foot on land on 6 April 1652. We were never told about these people in schools. So, hence, this is the reason why I want to inform you about the three first interpreters between the Tutu or Khoi Khoi people and the Dutch. So for three Fridays, I'm going to tackle or tell you about each interpreter separately. The first interpreter that I want to tell you about is Harry the Strandloper or Harry the Beachcomber. Or his real name in Tutu language was Altsumau. Now Harry or Altsumau was the chief of the Hori Haikona people. They were of the Koi Koi or the Kuku group of people who lived here in the peninsula area as well as Cape Town area. They were called the Strandloopers or beachcombers by the Europeans for they got all their food from the ocean, out of the ocean. It was shellfish, fish, seals, crabs, all kinds of food. As they also went to Robin Island in small boats to find penguins and to eat penguins. The Gori High Corner or the Strandloopers had no sheep nor did they have any cattle to trade with the European people. Also Mao, we're not really sure when he was born, but they think that he lived in between 1625 until 1663. Now, if you translate his name, Otsumal, directly into English, it would mean he who swims among fish or with fish. <laughs> Probably old Harry was a very good swimmer. Who knows? They also say he got his name because the English took him on a very, very big ship all the way to Batavia, Jakarta, Indonesia today. Or he got his name because he was a few times on boats to Saldana Bay, to Robben Island, as well as to Hout Bay. Who knows where he got his name? But I think because he was a very good swimmer. The English called him Harry and the Dutch Harry. Probably because they couldn't pronounce the Khoi Khoi name Otsumau. Now, in 1631, Otsumau was taken by the English all the way to Jakarta, Indonesia or Batavia. He was, the aim was actually so that he can learn English as well as learn the English way of doing everything. Then he was brought back all the way to Cape Town to act as interpreter and an agent between the Khoi Khoi people and the British. A favourable relationship started between the British and Harry or Altomato. When Harry ran into trouble on the mainland with other, other Khoi Khoi groups, he went to the English and asked them, please help me. And then the English said, no problem, Harry. We will send you to Robben Island with 20 followers. And so Harry or Otsumau became the first postmaster as well as lighthouse keeper on Robben Island. The relationship between Harry and the British was mutually satisfying. Harry learned English, Dutch, Portuguese, French, and thus became a very good trader and interpreter. 
And Harry made lots of money and became quite wealthy. At the end, he was quite a rich chief of the Gori High Kona people. Everything went well for Harry until what happened? Jan van Riebeek, the Dutch commander, arrived in Table Bay on 6 April 1652. Now, you know that whole little picture that we saw in the history books where Harry de Strandloper is bowing down at Jan van Riebeek and his wife Maria de Quillery when they got off the ship? That is all wrong. That didn't happen. It was not really, you know, that Harry was welcoming and had a whole entourage with him, throwing the red carpet out for Maria and Jan. No, he didn't even have a bunch of portillas for Maria to welcome her in South Africa. The only thing that he had with him was a few letters that was left for Jan van Riebeek um, by Jan van Teigen. Jan van Teigen had also left some horses for Jan van Riebeek. And that was what Harry the Strandloper brought to Jan van Riebeek. So in Jan van Riebeek's diary, he states, Oh jee, wij ontmoeten dus Harry op het strand. En nou daar bracht hij voor wij toch een beetje post, een paar briefjes. En ook uh, paarden wat Jan van Teigelen voor wij achtergelaten het hier in de kaap. To translate that, that would mean, well, um, Harry only brought us some letters and horses, which Jan van Teigeling, another Dutch explorer, left for them here in the Cape. Now remember, Jan van Riebeek had the orders of the year 17, the lords or the, the company directors of the Dutch East Indian Company, to immediately start building a fortress as well as start bartering with the local people. Hmm. So Jan van Riebeek and his men got off the ship and they quickly had to find their land legs. Because remember, they were for a few months on the ocean and getting them on land, it was quite difficult to stand. They immediately had to start building. But remember, Jan van Riebeek had the B team with him. It wasn't really the best men ever. They couldn't find work there in Holland. So they opt to go to Africa and start, you know, building a halfway station for the Dutch East Indian Company. So <laughs> they were not really builders, nor were they craftsmen at all. And the Khoi Khoi people couldn't understand the way of living of the Europeans. For suddenly they are demanding the Khoi Khoi to actually help them to build this fortress. They said, hell no, we're not interested, thank you very much. Jan van Riebeek then told Harry, Harry, ja, verspreid woord, ga daar allemaal en vertellen die dat ik wel alcohol heb en ook een beetje, ja, tabak. En wij willen dus ruilen voor koeien en schapen. He told Harry, Harry, go out and spread the word that I have alcohol and tobacco that I can trade and barter for uh, cows and sheep. And uh, so Harry found him once again in a favorable position among the Dutch and the Khoi Khoi people. He could speak both languages. Once again, he was in that sweet spot. Then Harry said to Jan van Riebeer that there were more clans of the Tutu people that was living in and around uh, the Cape Peninsula as well as Table Bay. It was his tribe, which were the Hori Haikona, then there were the Seldana people, as well as the Fismans. Now the Fismans, he said, they had no sheep, uh, they only had a few cattle, but the Seldana people, they have a lot of cows, and they do have a lot of sheep. According to Jan van der Riebeek's diary, Harry also said that the fishermans, or the fishermans, the fishmen, they were all robbers. And that the Saldana people and Harry's people, the Gori Haikonas, they didn't like each other. And that Jan van der Riebeek was rather killed 
the, the first months immediately before they cause a lot of problems. And it will also relieve the, the, the Santana people and Ghori High Corners without problems. Just kill them. Jan van der Beek says, Nee, 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 nee. Dat is niet, niet uh, gewoon. We zullen het niet doen. So, he said, I'm sorry. This is not the way we are going to, to behave and, and do our business. We will not kill them. We will rather trade with them as well. The Dutch grew very wary of Harry, as well of Harry of them. You see, once Harry or Ultimata started losing his bargaining power, that was the beginning of the end for, for Harry. He, he tried to outsmart the Dutch at their own game. Jan wrote in his diary, Oh yeah, we weet niet wat Harry vertellen voor voor de Saldana mensen. We don't know what Harry is actually telling the Saldana people. Oh yeah, want want dit vroeger naar naar wij gekomen om ja een beetje de royal handel te doen, maar niet meer. Previously they came to the fortress to do the bartering with us, but nowadays they don't come to the fortress. We are not sure what Harry is telling them. Another thing what he also states in his diary is that Harry likes the English much more than he likes the Dutch. And that was probably one of the big reasons why Harry kept the Sultana people away from the Dutch. He also stated that whenever the English are in the harbor, the Sultana people come to the beach and trade with them directly. So something was fishy, and Jan van Riebeek didn't like that. The Khoi Khoi was very worried of the supply and demand of the Europeans for cattle and, and sheep. They thought by themselves, this is not sustainable. We will not be able to supply them the whole time with, <laughs> with cattle and sheep. Jan van Riebeek then also wrote in his diary, and he said, Dit was een heel snelle plan geweest om de, de kooi kooi personen op de hotten tot te doden en de oude schapen de koeien voor wij te pakken. It would have been much easier for us rather to kill the kooi kooi people or the hotten tot as they call them than to barter with them. But old Jan had the instructions from the Lord 17 of the year 17 the company directors of the Dutch East Indian Company, not to colonize Africa, but only to have a halfway station there and also to barter friendly with the local people. So, old Jan van Riebeek's hands were cut off. He couldn't, you know, take whatever he wanted with force. By then, the Hore High Corners or the Strandloopers, uh, Harry's people, actually circled in the, the fortress that Jan van Riebeek had built. So they couldn't trade without Harry's help. Jan van Riebeek was quite uneasy with this whole situation and he had quite a lot to write about the situation in his diary. And he stated that it was time to find another interpreter, or to train another interpreter to avoid Ultimato and just to trade with him and to barter with him. So that is how Kritua, the second interpreter of South Africa, came about. She was the niece of Ultimato and nobody is really sure why and how she was brought to Jan van Riebeek and Maria de Quellery, Jan van Riebeek's wife, to work for them as an 11 or 12 year old girl. So she was taught Dutch and became the second interpreter. Altsumato no longer trusted the Dutch for he became redundant and was replaced as interpreter. And so he started rebelling against the Dutch. So one evening on 19 October uh, 1653, he and the Strandloopers or his clan, the Ghori Haikonas, rose up and they stole all the cattle of the Dutch East Indian Company at the fortress. 
and they also killed a young herdsman, David Jans. And David Jans worked for Commander Jan van Riebeek. Harry then fled and tried to get the support of all the other Khoi Khoi clans to rise up with him. Kurtua also went away for a few weeks into the bushes to try to see what's going to happen, if there's going to be a war or what's going to happen. So she stayed away from the fortress. Mm. According to Harry, he just went and reclaimed the cattle that the Dutch unfairly traded with them. The Dutch, on the other hand, said, well, no, we traded fairly for the, for the cattle and then the Gore Haikonas and Harry de Strandlober came and stole the cattle back and they killed David Jans. So, at first, the, the, uh, this caused quite a lot of eruptions between the Dutch and the, the Khoi Khoi people. The Dutch approached the other Khoi Khoi clans in a very friendly manner. And that sort of lured Ultimato out of the bushes and back to the castle of Good Hope. When Harry arrived at the fortress or the castle, he protested and told the Dutch that he had nothing to do with the stealing of the cattle nor of the murders. So he brought Jan van Riebeek 40 cattle as a peace offering. But unfortunately for Harry, the other Khoi Khoi people didn't trust Harry anymore. And there was a new leader. His name was Doman or Numao. I will later on tell you about Duman as interpreter, but he caused a lot of trouble for Altumau and Ketua. He told Jan van Riebeek, you can rather trust me. And he had this kind of reverent look, um, you know, and way of speaking. And that's why they called him Duman or Duman in Afrikaans. Well, Ketua also had a very difficult time at that stage. Because the Dutch didn't trust her at all anymore, so she turned to alcohol. Now, I will tell you later or in my next videos all about Kritua. Let's still focus on Harry, her uncle. Dumont, on the other hand, he started to open his eyes and saw what the Dutch were busy doing, taking over their country and their land. So by 1685, he had an uprising against the Dutch. And it was the first wars between the Khoi Khoi people and the Dutch people. <laughs> but once again, I will tell you later about Duman and his story. But when this war broke out, suddenly the Dutch turned again to a poor automato at Robben Island. And they said, please, Harry, come and help us here now to be a, a mediator between the Khoi Khoi people and the Dutch. But Al Tomato wasn't up for it anymore. He was sick and tired of being the puppet in between the Dutch and the Khoi Khoi people. When he was no more worth to the Dutch, they took him back to, to Robben Island. And what did Al Tomato do? <laughs> he was also the first escapee of Robben Island. He stole a, a, a what do you call it, a, a rowing boat and he rode all the way from Robben Island back to the mainland. And he stayed away from the Cape Castle so that the Dutch couldn't see him. During 1660, the peace treaty was signed between the Dutch and the Khoi Khoi people. Altomato passed away in 1663 as a lonely man, but he was an enigma. He was a freedom fighter. He was this country's first interpreter. We salute you, Altomato, or Harry Strandlooper, Harry the Beachcomber. My dear history lovers, our history is quite complex, but that makes us the Rainbow Nation. So I won't like to stay in another country. I would stay in South Africa with its rich history or their history. The biggest downfall of the interpreters was because they turned against each other. Dear history lovers, this was then the story of Altsumao or Harry Strandlooper, 
the man who swim among fish. So join me next time for the story on Kratua or Eva, the second interpreter of South Africa. Happy historing around. Oh, you know what? Please subscribe, like and share and, and leave a comment and, and tell me what kind of stories you would like to hear. And also maybe your, your view on the story of today. Happy Eastering around. Ciao.